The background eraser tool is an extremely useful tool, especially for isolating hair. Something to keep in mind is that the background eraser tool is a destructive edit. That means that it destroys the information in the image, uh, effectively eliminating it. The only way to get it back is to undo. So I suggest that before you erase, whether you're using the background eraser or the regular eraser, you duplicate the layer. That way, in the event that you make a mistake, God forbid, you can go back and find your original image in a separate layer, rather than trying to dig through a list of undos and hope that you can undo back to that point. So before we erase, I have already duplicated my base layer, and I'm going to be erasing on a copy. And here is the layer I want to show through. So I want this girl to look as though the picture was taken with this background behind her rather than the flat gray. You'll notice there's a lot of hair. Hair is very tricky and the background eraser tool can come in handy when doing hair and I'll show you how. You'll find the background eraser tool right over here on your tools palette, E on the shortcut, and you'll see several options for it. I'm going to explain the options and we're going to play with them so you can see what they do practically. First option here is the brush option where you can set the size, hardness, and spacing. The background eraser tool is a brush so you can paint with it as one and if you have a tablet you can use pen pressure and the stylus wheel to help you out. Right now I'm going to leave everything as you see it and we'll move on to these options. We have a sampling option for continuous, for sampling once, or for sampling background swatch. Sampling continuously means that when you paint with the background brush, the crosshairs in the middle, it will sample everything it touches. So continuous sampling means that crosshair is always sampling whatever color it's going over as you paint. So right now I'll show you. I'll just start painting. Right now it's sampling the gray and you'll notice it's not deleting her hair as much but if I were to run it over the hair as soon as that crosshair sees that darker tone it's going to start erasing it. Obviously this is destroying a lot more of the image than I wanted so it's not working out in my favor. I'm going to undo that and pick sampling once. Let me show you the difference. Now wherever you click the crosshairs will sample that color and that's the only color it will delete until you let go and click again. So right now if I click and paint it's only sampling that original gray and I can paint in here on the dark parts of her hair and it won't delete them it's still sampling the original gray. Now if I let up and click again, it's going to sample whatever new color that I click on and it's going to make that the erased color. I'm going to go over here and undo those. Last option, sampling background swatch, is really useful if you need to get precise with what you're going to delete. When you select this, the color to be deleted will be sampled off the background swatch. So whatever color is here, that's what it will delete to the tune of whatever tolerance setting you have chosen. So if I choose a gray, nice gray color, click OK, that's my background swatch. I'm here deleting on my top copy and I'm painting it's actually not sampling right now at all. The crosshair is not sampling. It will only delete the background swatch color and anything around that color up to the tolerance of whatever is here. Which brings us on to some of the other options. Discontiguous, contiguous and find edges. Discontiguous means that when you click and paint you're going to be erasing any of that color which the brush finds. So when you roll over that color, it will start being deleted immediately. 
Contiguous, on the other hand, is useful in certain cases where you need to be particular. And let me show you how that works. We'll zoom in over here and I'll choose the background eraser with contiguous. A little bit smaller brush and we'll paint here. You'll notice that the brush is actually going over some gray area outside the section of hair I'm in, but it's not deleting it. It's only deleting inside the section I'm in. It's not jumping over the darker areas and deleting outside. That's really important if you're trying to be precise around an object because if I had discontiguous selected and did the same thing, you notice that it's deleting over the hair and anything that the brush touches within the range of that color I sampled. All right, find edges is useful if you want it to find the edges of the hair and not delete them. So it's not making a soft delete here, it's actually locating the edges. And you'll notice even the way that it erases is a little more blocky. It's trying to preserve the edges as much as possible. This is useful if you want to be really finite with your selection, but we're actually not going to use that right now. We're going to go to discontiguous and select once, or I'm sorry, sample once. All right, on our tolerance here, it usually starts down around 20 or 30 by default. We're going to raise it up. I'm going to put it at 45. It's good to start at a lower tolerance and work your way up. That way you don't accidentally delete something that you didn't mean to. Tolerance simply means that whatever your original sampling color was, the higher the tolerance number, the more of the surrounding hues and colors it's willing to delete. So if you sample a light gray, but put a little higher tolerance, it's also going to delete some gray that might be a little darker or lighter than your original selection. Really important. Protect foreground color is very useful if you do not want it to erase the foreground swatch color. Again, the foreground swatch is right down here in the background, of course, is the one behind it. The foreground I've actually selected as a light skin tone. I'm concerned that because the gray is light and the skin tone is light, that it might start deleting some of the skin tone. So as a protective measure, I've selected a skin tone and said protect foreground color. Now that won't protect all skin tones. It'll just protect the color that I picked in the swatch, which is kind of a main midline sampling of the skin tones. I don't want deleted. Let's go ahead and get erasing. I'm going to use a brush for this, but you can use a mouse if you want, either or. Brush allows me a little more uh, control over it, so if you have a tablet and you can use a pen, that would be great. I'm going to grab my background eraser, and I'm just going to start painting over here on this side. I'm going to put my crosshairs down in an area that has a mainline gray, the kind of gray I want to get rid of, and just keep painting. If you let off of your pressure, if you're painting with a pen, or your click, if you're painting with a mouse, and then click again, it will resample. So keep that in mind. It'll resample wherever you click the crosshairs in the new area. I'm being kind of careful down here around the skin just to make sure that I don't accidentally delete some. But... I think as a whole, that was a really quick and easy isolation of that hair. You'll notice it left a lot of the finite hairs in there and they're still visible and uh, it looks pretty good. Let's delete over on the left side here. I'm going to delete up around her hair. I'm actually not going to get near her face just yet. Don't forget you can change the size of the brush if you want to do a larger brush more at a time. That's great. I'm going to keep mine kind of small for the sake of protecting her face. And actually, when I get in close to the face, I'm going to release, shrink my brush even more, and continue to paint right around her face and forehead. You'll notice that, like right here on her forehead, it did actually do some deleting. That's why it's important to keep an eye on it. I'm going to undo that. Let's get in a little closer and try that again. You can delete with a hard edge brush if you want. 
just be aware that sometimes the background eraser leaves residue, which means it doesn't delete all the pixels. And what you end up with is kind of a fine haze of whatever it didn't sample and delete. In a case like that, if you used a hard edge brush, it would be very obvious the brush strokes that you made. So you don't want to use a hard edge most of the time with a background eraser. All right. I've got a pretty good sampling. Here's an illustration of the haze I'm talking about. At first glance, it looks like it isolated it well, but actually it left some gray residue that was outside the tolerance zone of my original sampling. So I'm going to go raise the tolerance. I'm going to make my brush bigger. I'm going to make sure that I have a soft edge. The hardness is all the way down and I'm gonna paint again over here. That'll just help reduce some of the gray residue left behind. And as I paint over here, you can see how it lightened that up. That means we also had a residue over there. Now, right now, that's not looking bad at all. Let me show you the difference between what we had and what we have. It did a pretty good job of isolating between these hairs it actually left a really nice refined um, mass of hair there. So it's looking good. And the background eraser tool can be used for many different things. Hair just happens to be my favorite use for it. But don't forget when you're using it, always duplicate your layer. It is a destructive edit. And be careful afterwards to look around your edges and make sure it didn't accidentally delete something you needed to keep. So there you have it, background eraser tool and hair isolation.